I came to the conclusion the other day that my ability to write poetry is a gift from God. I'm not suggesting that I'm some awesome poet or that people will love my poetry. It's not about that. It's that an idea hits me and I want to put rhythm to it. I want to put emotion in it. And as I do this, I learn about God, I learn about people, <laughs> I learn about myself. The gift is in the education I gain, the understanding, the comprehension of the world as a whole, and my little world around me, all from spending this time on a piece of writing. And then I thought about other people with other hobbies. I first thought about somebody who loves to cook, whether they're a great chef and earning a living from it, or a person who comes home from her daily job and enjoys creating a meal for her loved ones. This, too, is a gift from God. As the chef or the hobbyist slices their carrots, their onions, minces their garlic, and zests their lemon, I can only imagine the lessons that they're learning, the love that they're receiving and sending out as they do this. So I thought about this as an idea in general. Whatever passions we have, interests we indulge in, these are a gift from God. As we perform the actions of our passions, we have to concentrate, be present in the moment in order to do it well. Our worries, our concerns fade into the background, if not entirely drop out of our minds. How could this not be a gift from God? In understanding that it's a gift, I want to acknowledge God in the making of my poetry and in the making of my art pieces. For my poetry, it's easy enough to write about God or to God, and then nobody can mistake my intentions. But I do not always write poetry that shouts of God in this way. The same with my art. I'm an abstract artist, so how can one see God in my works of the abstract? There's a verse in the Bible that might answer this, and it's Colossians 3, 23 through 24. It says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. The phrase here, with all your heart, is also translated as heartily, or in the Greek, out of the soul. Isn't that a beautiful idea? That we should do our work out of our soul, and not just our work, but whatever we, it is that we do. This idea of doing things with all of our heart, and as though we're doing it for God, is a theme that runs throughout the Bible. As Christians, we are to have an enthusiasm for what we do. We are to practice diligence with whatever we set our hands to do. Romans 12, 11 through 12, we see that as Christians, our actions should be not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. As Christians, we are not to be a people who approach our work half-heartedly, but with all of our heart, with all of our diligence. Now, I've met people like this, and I always admire them. I know I've been one to let my emotions or my moods get the better of me, and when I could be doing something productive, instead I'm sitting on my couch frozen in apathy. But I can't sit there forever because there is yet something that stirs in me to keep going, to keep trying, to keep aspiring to be that kind of person. I can only attribute it to the Holy Spirit, that encouraging spirit of the Lord who works inside of me constantly. I don't know if I'll ever be a poet worth listening to or an artist whose works are understood or worthy of being admired, but I'll keep working at these things diligently because I long to express God's 
loveliness in some way. I want to put it in writing. I want to paint it down. And if people don't understand it or appreciate it, that will be okay as long as I continue to do it as though I'm doing it for the Lord. And if I do it for the Lord and I work at it diligently as from the soul, the moment I stop doing this for God is the moment I'm back sitting on the couch. Because when I'm not doing it for God, I no longer hear the lessons in the work. I no longer learn about the world or discover anything about myself. And that's what makes doing this stuff so compelling. But it's not just my art and poetry. And for you, it's not just your daily work, whatever that is. It's in everything that we do, from waking up in the morning, getting ready for the day, making our breakfast, brushing our teeth, showing up at work and putting in a day's work, our interactions with other people, and how we manage our money, how we take care of our bodies, how we take care of our children, our pets, our homes, all of these things, and everything else that I didn't mention that might be in your life. Can you imagine that if we did these things as from the soul, with all diligence and steadfastness, how much better our lives would be? This lifestyle of diligence and enthusiasm is a practice, one that we can get better at and better at if we work at it while asking God to help us become more like this. Because God's not going to ask us to do something like this or to be something like this, something that's not our normal, without helping us. But we have to ask for help. We have to be willing to hear it, which often means that we need to be open to correction and change. It's not an easy request, but that's what makes it interesting. It's the challenge, and it's a gift because it is interesting. It makes life rich, so, like you're really living life and not just gliding through. Now, that's the kind of life I'd like to live, and I hope you do too.